What's up my dudes? Earlier this summer I went to Portugal. It was my first time ever stepping foot in the country. Here's what happened. Really quick, I'd like to give a little bit of context. It feels wrong not to. I've been living in France since February. I took this trip a little over a month ago in early July as the situation in Europe has been largely stable for most of the summer as reflected by the official data. Travel within most of Europe, at least for now, has been fully legal as long as certain safety measures like wearing a mask indoors or in public transit are respected. So anyway, I hope you enjoy. So I basically packed for a little trip that I'm about to do to Portugal, which I'm super excited about. And uh, I should stop recording this right now because I'm gonna be late to my flight. Boom, that's what I'm taking. All packed, let's get going. Honestly, it kind of caught me off guard that practically every European I know is doing some form of travel this summer. I guess it helps to live in a place where a 12 minute flight is all it takes to get to another country. I'm exaggerating, but only kind of. I arrived right before golden hour, so that most likely had an impact, but the first thing that really struck me upon landing in Lisbon were the colors. The colors, man. The Portuguese color palette, at least in summer, is gorgeous. It's a lot of warm tones, pinks and oranges. My first objective was to get dinner. I had these delicious looking fried fish things. And then my first ever bacalao dish, which every Portuguese person has been harassing me to have. Really a solid first impression, let me say. The next day I took a train up to Porto as my loose plan was to slowly make my way back down throughout the week. I got an immediate sense that the rhythm of life here is considerably different than other places I've been. People move at a different pace. They're way less stressed out and uptight. Climate wise, I couldn't stop thinking that it felt like the Southern California of Europe. It's time to meet up with my friend, Bernardo. Oh, I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> Bernardo and Marta are Portuguese from different parts of Portugal. This is the battle right here. We have the battle. Porto, Lisbon. Lisbon. I would say that Porto is great. Lisbon is great, but Porto is smaller. In Porto, you're always like 15 minutes away from anything. But do you ever feel like, how would I say it? Não tem nada que fazer. No, 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 no. There's always something to do. Porto. Lisboa também é muito fixe. Não, mas depois no fim desta semana tu dizes qual é que preferes? Porto ou Lisboa? This is the most Sorry. dysfunctional blogging yeah. I've ever done. I don't know what the storyline is of today. <laughs> Me neither. In the past, when I would travel, I would stress myself out by trying to maximize every minute and squeeze the most out of my time there. This trip was a little different. I just wanted to enjoy myself and not get locked up in specific plans. The Portuguese way. Increasingly, I feel like the places I travel to and my experiences in those places reflect where I'm at in life. This year, for example, has done nothing but reinforce how little actual control I have over most things in life. I've been placing a lot of focus and energy not necessarily on self-improvement, but quite simply just not getting in my own way. Like prioritizing the things I actually want to worry about and paying attention to what I consume. I visited a famous bookstore called the Livraria Lello that apparently inspired J.K. Rowling's idea of Hogwarts, where I studied and got my degree in being the chosen one. The bookstore is cool, but Hogwarts is better. Later we went to the beach, which feels like it's always only 15 minutes away in this country. It has been so long since I've been to the beach. This is glorious. Oh my god, and it's still warm, and it's like, what time is it? It's like past 9 p.m. And while it's not something I necessarily always catch and include in my videos, it's the conversations that I have with the people that I'm spending time with that always stick with me. When I was younger, I would be laying down in my bed at night. I would start to have these thoughts that would terrify me, that we were just in this small dot in the middle of nowhere, and everything else is just infinity and you're just floating in infinity forever. How old were you? Like seven, six, seven, I don't Where know. Where did you get these ideas? They just popped in your head? They came in my, in my software, I don't know. <laughs> Increasingly, I find that my interactions and experiences with other people during my travels is what colors my perception of the places that I visit. 
<laughs> I wasn't in the best place mentally a few months ago, and though I obviously do not want to go back to that, having that kind of contrast has allowed me to really appreciate my interactions with people so much more. Dude, where where have you taken me exactly? So now we are like following this road that goes along the Douro River. This is a very famous river in Portugal because of the vineyards. This is where they plant the grapes to produce Porto wine. So you say you've never been here before? No, actually well, not. I love the fact that you're discovering this country kind of with me <laughs> right now. I found this little, like, this is such an, a European thing. You're gonna see what I'm talking about here. Hold on. I basically found my own little castle that looks out on all of Porto. What the heck? What the, what the heck? And we begin our descent back towards Lisbon. We listen to some fado on our way down, which is a genre of music unique to the country. Fado has a kind of melancholic feel, and it literally means destiny or fate. As if in some ways it's about accepting our fate, even if it's painful or bittersweet. The first fado singers, or fadistas, were prostitutes and the wives of fishermen who would leave and often never return. We hit a town called Costanova, famous for its striped houses, which I quite liked. Whoa, exploring Portugal. Yes, the exploration of Portugal happening right now. Next was Sintra. Remember when I said the pace was slower in Portugal? I mean it. It doesn't give a shit. Oh my god. There's already a guy. What is he going to do? Trying to find out what's going on. Going in. Que porra é essa? Oh my god. <laughs> and another guy. Oh shit. We got more going on. We got a showdown. Sintra is one of the most beautiful towns I've ever been to. It's definitely worth coming here if you ever want to visit the country. This is totally my kind of little I knew it. European town. I think for me, it's the green, all the greenery. I love the stones, like buildings like that. I don't know. I like that we're like on a hill. Did I seriously just say that? On a hill? Quinto de Regaleira with the, my attempt at a Lisbon accent. <laughs> this place looked more like a video game with amazing graphics than real life. This freaks me out. Oh. Can't even give any interesting updates. I don't do my research. I don't know where I'm going. I had my first ever pastel de nata. Wow, that's really good. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. No, no. No, you cannot. No, no. Oh my god, no. I can't believe you just did that. That was insane. Okay, I can't include everything I did that week, but I'd like to share one more spot that I went to. Okay, it's freezing. So windy over here, but oh, I'm told this is the westernmost point in Europe. This is what it looks like to capture a YouTube video. This is the real life version. You probably can't even hear it. <laughs> just the <laughs> subtitles. <laughs> This is confirmation that this was indeed the westernmost point in continental Europe. The wind is so strong! There it goes. Bye, son. And before I realized it, the week came to an end. Everything you just saw is now nothing more than a series of memories. I have a theory about Portugal. 
It's a country that has developed a particular taste for the bittersweet, the blend of joy and sorrow. There's an understanding here that you cannot actually separate pain and pleasure. One doesn't exist without the other. In a way that has perfectly captured what this year has felt like for me so far. The Portuguese poet Fernando Pessoa wrote, The value of things is not the time they last, but the intensity with which they occur. That is why there are unforgettable moments and unique people. This video is sponsored by Audible, which I use pretty much every day. It might be my favorite app on my phone. Audiobooks are my favorite way of consuming information. I think it's a format that allows you to go a lot deeper. You know, you're able to listen to information that has been distilled over the course of months or years in the span of a few hours. And so invariably, I have found that a lot of audiobooks have shifted and challenged my views of the world. I'm a huge fan of Malcolm Gladwell's work. I have now listened to three of his audiobooks, the latest one being David and Goliath, which he himself narrated, and he's really good at it. What can I say? I love the book. It's about underdogs, misfits, and the art of battling giants. I love Gladwell's way of taking stories that we're all like lightly familiar with from throughout history and adding whole new layers of meaning to them. That's what I mean by changing my views of the world. I could never really relate to the story of David and Goliath until I listened to this audiobook. Audible selection is enormous, and as I previously mentioned, Malcolm Gladwell's other works are on there too. Both Outliers and The Tipping Point were phenomenal. So you can start listening right now with a 30-day free Audible trial where you can choose one audiobook and two Audible originals. Visit audible.com slash Nathaniel Drew or text Nathaniel Drew to 500-500. The link, as always, is available down in the description below. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. I am sweating so much right now because it is so hot in my apartment. But, Ms. Lee's with them? No, but... <laughs> <laughs> so Bernardo.exe so has failed. <laughs> oh I can't see anything right now. What a mess. Vlogging this went to hell. Okay, here we go. In Portuguese. Ok, vamos lá. Vamos, né? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. oh my god.